हेलो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स माय यंग लर्नर्स हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू आर स्पेंडिंग योर टाइम विद योर पेरेंट्स एंड फ्रेंड्स एंजॉइंग एवरी बिट ऑफ इट एंड मेकिंग एवरी मोमेंट अ मेमोरेबल एंड अ मीनिंगफुल वन आई एम राखी मिश्रा एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस सेशन ऑफ इंग्लिश क्लास एंड टुडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस the second part of unit 2 the sound of music my dear children without wasting any time now let me just tell you about what we dis- what we discussed in part 1 because it is also related to it because the common thing between part 1 and part 2 is music we learned about we got to know about evelyn glen a scottish percussionist a world famous percussionist now she is from a different part of the world in the second part you are going to read about something which is your own and i think you have guessed it yes my dear children it is about the world of music of your own country that is india see the the words what it says the famous quote where words fail music speaks what does it mean music does not need any words to express you don't need anything to talk or to tell what music gives you what music explains what music or how music connects you where words fail to express music speaks and this is true not only through vocal music but we have several we have hundreds of varieties of musical instruments which our indian musicians have played and not only played they have popularized they have taken this indian music indian classical music throughout the world throughout the globe and people all around the world they are appreciating they are learning this indian classical music whether it is in a dance form or in a vocal form or in the instrumental form see this these clippings what do we see the ra- world famous indian musicians yes we have pandit hari prasad chaurasia ji who is a who is known for his beautiful skill on flute then we have ustad vilayat khan ji he is a very famous world famous sitarist we have ustad zakir husain ji you can see the instrument no need to tell yes it's tabla we have pandit ram narayan ji and he is on sarangi this instrument is sarangi and next we have ustad bismillah khan ji and he is uh on his shehnai and we have ustad amzad ali khan ji on sarood and this is a very small list you can say a very few clippings we have many 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 more instruments which are being played in our country by various musicians and not only by the indian musicians in fact we have several several such musicians who have taken this indian classical form indian instruments to various parts of the world of course this music does not restrict itself to any country or any region it travels throughout the globe it has it has always believed in exchanging and learning from oneself from each other now today we are going to read about to know about the life of this great indian musician ustad bismillah khan ji and this i think all of you i'm sure all of you have heard the name of ustad bismillah khan ji because whenever we happen to listen to shehnai from red fort it is he who plays it and he is the one who had played it for the first time on 15th august 1947 from red fort so we have this opportunity or 
text has given us this opportunity to know more about him, to know the uh, s details about his life, his childhood days, how he had brought the concept, how uh, he took this uh, the instrument to the people, to the masses, and he did not limit it to only the marriages and only in the temples. He made it an instrument which was being learned and practiced and made it as a profession for several musicians. So let us read about him through your text. Ustad Bismillah Khan, he was born on 21st March 1916 and he left us in the year 2006. That's not uh, quite, it's just hardly uh, a few, um, some, some years back that we lost him and he lived for 90 years but he has whatever he has left and you can see say that he was the soul of Shehnai, right? So we can read about him. Let us start it. Now first let us see how this concept of or the birth of the instrument Shehnai. Initially we didn't have Shehnai. It was an other, it was a different instrument called Pungi and from where this origin, what is the origin of this instrument Shehnai? Let us read it. Emperor Aurangzeb banned the playing of musical instrument called Pungi in the royal residence for it had a shrill unpleasant sound. Pungi became the generic name for reeded noise makers. Reeded means those who were making the uh, these instruments, this, uh, uh, instruments which are wind instruments, right? And became a generic name for reeded noise makers. Few had thought that it would one day be revived. A barber of a family of professional musicians who had access to royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the pungi. He chose a pipe with a natural hollow stem that was longer and broader than the pungi and made seven holes on the body of the pipe. So this is how the, the, the origin is actually the uh, first instrument was pungi and how the modification was done to that instrument and another instrument was uh, uh, took birth and what was it? That was the Shehnai and you can see in the picture how Pungi looked and then the types of Shehnai that is also shown in the, uh, uh, the second uh, clipping. When he played on it, closing and opening some of these holes, soft and melodious sounds we reproduced. He played the instrument before royalty and everyone was impressed. The instrument so different from the Pungi had to be given a new name. As the story goes, since it was first played in the Shah's chamber and was played by a Nai, Nai means barber, the instrument was named the Shehnai. So this is an interesting fact about the origin of this instrument, how, from where it uh, actually, uh, from where the concept of Shehnai came and why was it given the name Shehnai. Please note it. Here I would like to mention one thing. When I am reading it out, the whole text to you, remember the whole uh, text goes in a proper sequence. What you need to do is, while I am reading and discussing with you, you just need to make, just note what this part, what this paragraph is talking about. Like what first paragraph has highlighted is about the origin or the birth of Shehnai. So th this is how you are going to make small notes while we are discussing, right? Okay, then, then second paragraph. The sound of the Shehnai began to be considered auspicious. Auspicious means something which is very good for the occasion and here it is because it was played in the temples, it was played during the ma marriages, so it was considered to be auspicious. And for this reason, it's still played in temples and is an indispensable component of any North Indian wedding. There was a time 
now the concept has changed but there was a time when indian wedding especially the north indian wedding you'll always find either somebody is playing there or you'll find the records being played for everyone to enjoy that beautiful melodious uh, soothing pleasant sound of shehnai in the past the shehnai was part of nobai uh, nobut or traditional ensemble of nine instruments found at royal courts till recently it was used only in temples and weddings so there was a restriction it was not a common instrument to be played or learned or practiced or understood by uh, common people but it was only for certain places and it had only temples and weddings the credit for bringing this instrument onto the classical stage to make it as a classical instrument the credit goes to ustad bismillah khan as a 5 year old now let us see what happened in his childhood days his early life as a 5 year old bismillah khan played gilli danda gilli danda is there is a small gilli and a stick and you play it this is a very common uh, a, a very common uh, you can say a rural uh, game being played by the children uh, you'll find in the villages still these days they play it they don't and th that uh, is very common mainly in the indian villages especially in the north indian villages gilli danda near a pond in the ancient state of dumrao in bihar dumrao is again a, a, a small place in a, a place called near it's a place in baksar right uh, bhojpur is also very close to uh, dumrao and this is the place which is very close to uh, ustaz ustaz ji's uh, life right he would regularly go to the nearby uh, bihari ji temple in to sing the bhojpuri chait chait is one form of song right one style of song at the end of which he would earn a big laddu weighing 1.25 kg a prize given by the local maharaja so he, you see the how the time has changed now none of the children will accept it and the, the simplicity see the simplicity of this uh, of this great musician uh, who has given this such a big such a great uh, instrument to this whole world and he is not limited to only india he is known worldwide he is famous worldwide and if you see his childhood days it's so simple he was so satisfied with this kind of uh, a prize given to him by the local maharaja later on you see what all things he what awards he got received in his life this happened 80 years ago as i said when he was hardly 5 uh, years right and the it's long back right so this happened 80 years ago and the little boy has traveled far to earn the highest civilian award in india the bharat ratna you can see our president uh, k r narayanan he is um, giving his offering his uh, giving away this um, the civilian highest civilian award to uh, this greatest musician right born on 21st march 1916 See, he was born on 21st March 1916. Bismillah belongs to a well-known family of musicians from Bihar. His grandfather, Rasool Baks Khan, was the Shehnai Nawaz of Bhojpur King's Court. As I mentioned earlier, also he was uh, this uh, the one which we I uh, mentioned, Dumrao. It's it's in Baksar district, right? And it is this place was the place from where his uh, his uh, paternal uh, side. right they lived there and his father grandfather all of them they lived there and they were very popular there uh, rasul baks khan was a shehnai nawaz of bhojpur king's court his father paigambar baks the other paternal, paternal ancestors were also great shehnai players so they in fact he was brought up in a family which was so close to this uh, to music and specially to this instrument but no one had thought of making it so popular taking it to the world and making it popular instrument all around the globe the young boy took to music early in life at the age of 3 when his mother took him to his maternal uncle's house in banaras 
Now Varanasi, Bismillah was fascinated watching his uncle's practice the Shehnai. Soon Bismillah started accompanying his uncle Ali Baks to the Vishnu temple of Banaras where Baks was employed to play the Shehnai. Ali Baks would play the Shehnai and Bismillah would sit captivated for hours on end. So you can you can very well understand that his right from his childhood days he was made to listen to this instrument very closely and he used to get captivated by this. Slowly he started getting lessons in playing the instrument and would sit practicing throughout the day. For years to come the temple of Balaji and Mangalamaya and the banks of Ganga became the young apprentice favorite haunts where he could practice in solitude. It is always said that Ganga and the heart of Ganga had been very close to him. In fact he used to sit and practice at the he used to play uh, this instrument he used to play for hours together at the banks of this river the flowing waters of the ganga inspired him to improvise it's not that he just used to used to sit there and uh, play this instrument but he had preferred to sit there because he believed that he learned a lot from ganga from the river Ganga, right? And invent ragas that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of Shehnai. It was a, a, a myth by uh, the earlier musicians that there are certain ragas which cannot be played uh, on Shehnai, but he proved that nothing like that and he invented several such ragas which could be played even on Shehnai. This is the place where he really loved. You can see him standing and observing from the ghat and enjoying every bit of it. At the age of 14, Bismillah accompanied his uncle to the Allahabad Music Conference. At the end of his recital, Ustad Fayaz Khan patted the young boy's back and said, work hard and you shall make it. If you remember in part one also I had mentioned that it is because of this hard work that she had achieved what she wanted. She gave to the world what no one could believe. Similarly here even Ustadji also he worked very hard and this was the mantra given to him by Ustad Fayaz Khan. Work hard and you shall make it. With the opening of the All India Radio in Lucknow in 1938 came Bismillah's big break. He soon became an often heard Shehnai player on radio. When India gained independence on 15th August 1947, Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to greet the nation with this, with his Shehnai. Such a great moment, such a memorable moment for each and every Indian. For Ustadji, of course it was. But for we Indians, we could I think none of the Indians could say that we'll forget him because it is he who had played, who had welcomed, who had introduced us to this independent country on that day through his Shehnai. He poured his heart out into Raq Kafi. He had played Raq Kafi from the Red Fort to an audience which included Mahatma Gandhi and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who later gave his fa famous uh, Trist with destiny speech. Nehruji had addressed the nation and the name of that speech is Trist with destiny. So the, the as if the entire uh, atmosphere, uh, the, the kind of happiness that people uh, had, no doubt these things had added to the celebration of each and every Indian listening and addressing and witnessing the speech as well as Khan Sahab's or Ustadji's Shehnai. Bismillah Khan has given many memorable performances both in India and abroad. As I said, he had taken this, uh, his Shehnai throughout the world, throughout the globe. It was not limited to only his, uh, his place Bihar or his country, uh, but he had taken this, he had popularized it all around the globe. His first trip abroad was to Afghanistan where King Zahir Shah was so taken in by the maestro that he gifted his, him priceless Persian carpets and other souvenirs. The king of Afghanistan was not the only one to be fascinated with Bismillah's music. He was so much uh, fascinated, he was so much impressed by uh, his music that 
he had so much things to offer to him. Film director Vijay Bhatt, I'll show you his picture. Here he is. Uh, Vijay Bhatt, a very popular uh, music, uh, uh, film director uh, in the, in uh, you can say in 1950s, uh, he had produced, he had directed several films and one of the films that he had uh, directed was Goon Jati Shehnai, which is, uh, which is so, uh, which is to be mentioned here, uh, why I am saying, why is it mentioned here, because the whole film uh, was based on uh, the life of a Shehnai player and in the whole film, the Shehnai that is being played is by Ustad Ji. So, film director Vijay Bhatt was so impressed after hearing Bismillah play at a festival that he named a film after the instrument called Goonj Uthi Shehnai. The film was a hit and one of the Bismillah Khan's composition, Dilka, Dilka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya. If you, I know this must be, uh, this was a film which was uh, released in 1959. Uh, for you children, uh, this is something very unusual, but you can definitely uh, listen to this song if you want, right? And it was a black and white film. Uh, there was no concept of colors uh, in that. So uh, it's such a beautiful song. Turned out to be a nationwide chart buster. Despite this huge success in the celluloid world, celluloid means related to films, Bismillah Khan's ventures in film music were limited to two. One is Vijay Bhatt's Goonjuti Shehnai and another was in a South Indian film that was uh, Vikram Srinivas was the producer and he had produced Kannada venture uh, Sanadhi Apanna. Uh, this is another film which is also based on the life of a Shehnai uh, Player, right? I just can't come to terms with artificiality and glamour of the world, film world, he says with emphasis. Had he, uh, had there been, it's not that he was not offered chances or he was not offered, he had lot of opportunities in the film world also. But what is the thing that he has mentioned here? You please note it that he was not, uh, he was, he had a very uh, negative opinion about uh, the world, the film world, and he said that he he does not uh, he is not very comfortable, or he does not very he does not appreciate that artificiality and the glamour of that film world. So he wanted to uh, just uh, have a uh, just quit from there, and he never encouraged any of the offers from the film world. Awards and recognitions came thick and fast. Now for him, awards and recognitions, if you See if you see his uh, the documentaries or if you see the interviews, uh, you'll find the room where he uh, he had uh, spent his uh, life uh, in Varanasi. It's in a very small uh, congested lane, uh, very normal, very simple life. And if you go and see, it's the entire room is entire house is filled with all the awards and recognitions that he had received. Uh, throughout his life. So, uh, these things had um, had never uh, made him, uh, ma uh, never changed his personality. He remained a very simple man throughout his life. He led a very, very simple, a very humble person, very ground to earth, down to earth person. And he had never uh, shown any kind of uh, arrogance or uh, never, he was never, uh, uh, never took it as a a matter of, uh, you can say, something that would uh, reflect in his personality for his recognition all around the world, but he preferred to remain as a very simple and humble person. Awards and recognition came thick and fast. Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to be invited to perform at the prestigious Lincoln Center Hall in the United States of America. He also took part in the World Exposition in Montreal. You see the platforms that he got. He got several platforms at the, uh, in the international level uh, to perform and make this instrument, his Shehnai, so popular. And it was so popular, these things itself speak that people all around the world, they loved uh, him playing his uh, Shehnai. 
in the Cannes Art Festival and in the Osaka Trade Fair. So well known did he become internationally that an auditorium in Tehran was named after him, Tahar Mosiki Ustad Bismillah Khan. So it's a great honor for a musician that a, a hall is named after him. And that too, not in your country. You get recognition in your country, but recognizing, getting a recognition in some other country, that it's a big achievement in one's life. National awards like the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, and the Padma Vibhushan were conferred on him. In 2001, Ustad Bismillah Khan was awarded India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna. With the coveted award resting on his chest and his eyes glinting with rare happiness, he said, All I would like to say is, teach your children music. He wanted that every child of this country should learn music, should be close to music because he believed Music is something that connects us with the Almighty. It makes our path, our journey to get connected to the Almighty so smooth. And it will not only bring a positive change in your personality, but it also controls, it helps to control your emotions. And you can, your emotions, your uh, beliefs, everything will be reflected through your music. You don't have to use words for that to express your emotions. Use music to express your emotions. And he wanted that it is Hindustan's richest tradition. Music is Hindustan's richest tradition. So we, every child must learn, must be encouraged to learn music. And that's what I also would like to say that children, if you ever get a scope, please do, do pursue some kind of music training, whether instrumental or vocal or any kind of dance form, but remain close to music. Even the West is now coming to learn our music. In spite of having traveled all over the world, Khan Sahab, as he fondly called, is exceedingly fond of Banaras and Dumrao, and they remain for him the most wonderful towns of the world. He never preferred to live anywhere else. He always wanted Banaras and Dumrao. And he spent almost uh, a lot of his time, even in the last part of his life, also he spent in Banaras. A student of his once wanted him to head a Shehnai school in the USA. And the student promised to recreate the atmosphere of Banaras by replicating the temples there. But you know what was his reply? But Khan Sahib asked him if he would be able to transport River Ganga as well. He, though he was a Muslim, but he never wanted uh, the religion to be a factor in making his music or make, uh, reaching to the people through his music. He always treated everyone equally. He, was always, uh, he, he knew only one language, that is the language of music. And this river Ganga, as I had already shown you, that he, was, he loved to sit uh, on the banks of river Ganga and practice and sit there and get, uh, let the people enjoy his music. L later he is remembered to have said, that is why whenever I am in a foreign country, I keep yearning to see Hindustan. While in Mumbai, I think of only Banaras and the Holy Ganga. And while in Banaras, I miss the unique Matha of Dumra. So if he is in Banaras, he misses his native village. Ustad Bismillah Khan's life is a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of India. Absolutely. One that effortlessly accepts that devout Muslim like him can very naturally play the Shehnai every morning at the Kashi Vishwanath temple. You see the beauty of this man, how he has brought the, uh, how he has really proved the cultural exchange uh, in our country. We are completely secular. This proves that he being a Muslim, he used to play Shehnai every morning at Kashi, uh, at the Kashi Vishwanath temple in Varanasi. So this, the life of this great musician, right, life of Ustadji has not only uh, shown us uh, or has not only uh, given us an idea of 
how he had spent how he learned what he did where he lived but he has given a message his life is a message for all the indians for all the people for all the music lovers that we must talk in the language of music we should not we should not allow any other kind of barriers to come into the path of our love for music if you really have love and an uh, a, a closeness a close bonding with music then forget who you are just understand that you are a music lover now here we have some uh, short questions for you from the text please do it uh, you have to read if you want you can re read it once again but these are just you have to put a tick to the correct one it's these are uh, kind of mcqs so you can uh, see uh, simple bismillah khan's paternal ancestors were professional musicians so you will not have any problem i am sure just try it this helps you in comprehending having a better comprehension of what you just read very simple ones right here is a small task for you uh, i have just modified uh, this task a bit what you need to do you just got to know about ustad ji's uh, idea or his uh, views his feelings on certain things like when it comes to uh, migrating to the usa he said that uh, will you be able to bring uh, the river ganges there so he wanted to keep himself very much rooted to his soil he never wanted to shift from uh, his place and he never even had any uh, desire to go and become famous in some other country he was very uh, he he loved his country a lot uh, leaving banaras and dumrao for all these things he had certain feelings so what you need to do is you just have to pick out the lines or the words from the text from the story that you have read which talks about his feelings on these issues now we have certain questions for you question number 1 why did aurangzeb ban the playing of the pungi second question number 2 how is a shehnai different from a pungi question number 3 where was the shehnai played traditionally how did bismillah khan change this let us go to the next question question number 4 when and how did bismillah khan get his big break question number 5 where did bismillah khan play the shehnai on 15 august 1947 and why was the event historic question number 6 why did bismillah khan refuse to start a shehnai school in the usa all these questions can easily be answered by locating in the text go through the text carefully these are all straight questions now we'll move on to the next from the text on bismillah khan find the words and phrases that match these definitions and write them down the number of the paragraph where you will find the words or phrases has been given for you in the brackets first one you look at paragraph 1 the meaning is given to you the home of royal people refer to paragraph 1 you can find out the word which means the home of royal people now go to paragraph 5 we have the meaning the state of being alone again you will find you have to locate the word which means the state of being alone next we have paragraph 2 just go to paragraph 2 the word meaning is given to you that is a part which is absolutely necessary locate the word which means a part which is absolutely necessary 
Again, go to paragraph 5. You will find a word which means to do something not done before. Now go to question, paragraph 13. The word meaning is without much effort. Paragraph 13. I hope you have been able to trace this word. The hint is given in the meaning itself. Then you have paragraph 9. Quickly and in large quantities. This is the meaning given to you. Find out two words are there with the meaning quickly and in large quantities. Then my dear children, you have next question. In this question you have two meanings given in the bracket. You have to choose the correct one. When something is revived, what do we say? Remains dead or lives again. Next one. When a government bans something, it wants it to stop or to start. So it wants it start, stopped or started. You know it very well. This is the time when certain things are banned. So you can easily guess. Next we have... When something is considered auspicious, you have certain auspicious occasions. Now you see whether it is welcome it or avoid it. Guess out of your own experience, previous knowledge also, you can easily find out which meaning is correct here. Then we have when we take to something, that means we find it boring. Or we find it interesting. Next, when you appreciate something, you find it good and useful or you find it of no use. You tell me, you are appreciated many a times in the class by your teacher. So, when the teacher finds it good and useful or finds it of no use, then teacher says, appreciate. Yes, I appreciate you. See, here you can even guess. You need not locate the meaning in the dictionary. You can even use your common sense or use your previous knowledge and guess the meaning here. Then we have when you replicate something, you do it for the second time or for the first time. Next one. When we come to terms with something, it is... Still upsetting or no longer upsetting? So this is how you have to uh, do these this question. Then you have uh, tick right answer. Something that can be revived means it lives again. Again, here I would say that if you get stuck, refer your dictionary. You may uh, find it very simple. But in case you find it difficult, don't hesitate to use dictionary. Because dictionary does not only give you the meaning, but it... Uh, it helps you to understand every bit of that word. Uh, how is it used? What is the placement of that? You see one of the exercises given in your text. It mentions that uh, every word cannot be placed wherever you want. There are certain uh, rules for its placement. And uh, you have to go through it. So your dictionary tells us that how you can put how or how the word can be placed where what it what whether it should be played before a noun or before a verb how is it to be placed that everything is discussed in the dictionary so please uh, go close to dictionary it will help you right uh, here is a quick uh, writing task for all of you after reading part one and part two about Evelyn Glenn and Bismillah Khanji uh, I think you have go, uh, got a kind of um, a close association with the world of music uh, so now what I would do is I want you to take up any other two musicians and uh, from of India and find out uh, just collect the information uh, draw a biographical sketch of uh, the two musicians you are free to choose any two right 
uh, no restriction in that for that matter and you can uh, choose the, any kind of instrumental or vocal or dance form anything you can just try it out what do you learn one one most important thing what do we learn from the lives of these two musicians we have learned that if we have strong determination if we work hard if we have strong will power and if we are determined nothing is impossible in this life nothing is impossible and here you see in the year 2008 a uh, stamp postal stamp was uh, published and uh, it was uh, his photo was there to because he's uh, he has given uh, such uh, he's recognized and he's so popular and he has made this is uh, made india uh, feel proud throughout the world for his uh, shehnai wadan right so uh, the stamp was uh, released in 2008 and here you see just listen to his performance uh, a short video clip of it just note here he how he is enjoying his performance there is every every part of it every bit of it he wants the audience to enjoy as well as he himself is enjoying it such a cool uh, personality and uh, he is enjoying and he is making everyone enjoy that right so and if you want you can see the source of it you can go to that particular clipping and you can listen to it if you want uh, to enjoy it once again so with this i come to the conclusion of the second unit both uh, second unit part 2 from the life of ustad bismillah khan thank you and have a nice day